Hi, thanks for the invitation to participate in this meeting once again. Uh, my name is Dr. Don Buford. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Dallas, Texas. The title of this presentation is Single Row Rotator Cuff Repair. These are my disclosures. They're available online as well. One of the things we need to first discuss in talking about single row rotator cuff repair is what is the best single row? It doesn't make any sense to talk about single row until we have an idea of, of what the best is. Luckily in 2022, I think we have a pretty good understanding that triple loaded anchors are better than double loaded anchors. And even within a triple loaded anchor, there are many different suture configurations. And we now have a pretty good idea of which one's the best. And this dates back initially to 2006 with Dr. Alan Barber's work, where Dr. Barber looked at a double loaded anchor, and then he looked at various suture configurations all made with a triple loaded anchor. And what Dr. Barber found was that three simple interrupted sutures was the best way to organize your suturing when you have a triple loaded rotator cuff anchor. That suture configuration best resists cyclic loading, that suture configuration best resists gap formation, and that suture configuration has the strongest and greatest overall strength. And now we have over 15 years of published clinical results using triple loaded suture anchors for rotator cuff repair, documenting the successes. Repair tension does matter. This is something that we've been looking at for over two decades now. Uh, Dr. Davidson and, and Dennis Rivenberg first published in 2000 in the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery, where they documented that there were two things wrong with repairs that had high tension. Number one, the objective outcomes were worse. Number two, patients didn't like it either. And so that was one of the early publications showing that rotator cuff repair tension probably matters, and we need to pay attention to that in our rotator cuff repair constructs. In 2019, these authors further documented that higher tension repairs are associated with higher retail rates, something that many authors and experts had been saying for years, but now we have multiple publications documenting that high tension or excess tension in a repair is not a positive thing. So if we're going to use single row, one of the stated advantages is that we can minimize tension on the repair. We're not trying to eliminate all tension. That's really not possible. We're just trying to minimize excess tension. We want there to be the right amount of tension. And in terms of deciding where to place that single row within the rotator cuff footprint, we do have some guidance. In 2010, David Wang and Mark Gettleman presented research at the ANA annual meeting that showed that if you place your suture anchors at the lateral aspect of the, of the footprint, your tension is five times higher than if you place your suture anchors at the medial aspect near the articular margin. And so just that one and a half to two centimeters difference in anchor placement can lead to a five-fold in vivo increase in tension on your repair construct. So as a result, if we're trying to minimize tension on the repair, we should be placing our anchors more medial, closer to the articular margin, which is what I do in my clinical practice as well. What are the clinical results? Well, we have documented results going back at least to 2009 to 2011 timeframe. Uh, this is a, a clinical outcomes paper that I presented back in 2011 at the annual ANA meeting. And this was before we had commercially available triple loaded rotator cuff anchors. So these were homemade anchors. And what I mean by homemade is that this is at the bond suture. That purple stitch that you see was made with a surgical marker, just coloring the suture. And then whoever had the best eyes in the operating suite had to load that purple suture into the eyelet of a double loaded anchor. And so these were all homemade triple loaded anchors. We were hoping that they were better than double loaded because it made sense intuitively. Luckily that turned out to be the case. And in this clinical report, I documented a 91% intact uh, cuff rate at one year by MRI scan. It's a high number, but again, the triple loaded technique is better than the double loaded technique. And this is a number that's been validated by other authors. Here, Dr. Robert Burks and his colleagues published a similar result in 2017 with 90% intact at one year by MRI scan. And then the very next year in 2018, uh, Dr. Dirkman, Dr. Carzell, 
Dr. Gettleman published, again, a similar 91% intact rate at two years. So now we're out to two years by MRI scan. And so this single row, triple loaded anchor technique can be very successful, as successful as any other rotator cuff repair technique that has been published. And the one thing I would want to point out with this study is that they also augmented their repairs by making some bone marrow vents in the greater tuberosity. And so now we have a chance to let biology start to, to impact the result also. And I think most of us think that's a positive thing to do, to try and get a biological augment, if you will, for these uh, rotator cuff repairs. What about the cost? We can't ignore cost. The single row should be cheaper than the double row because we're using fewer anchors most of the time. These authors documented that the single row cost was about $1,600 and that the double row cost was about $2,100. So like I said, on balance, fewer anchors should be cheaper. And this is an important concept for shoulder surgeons. We have to play the what if game. What if this surgery doesn't do well? What if the rotator cuff doesn't heal or it comes apart? Well, Dr. Cho published this beautiful analysis of re-tear patterns after arthroscopic cuff repair. And he looked at the re-tear patterns after single row versus double row techniques. And what he described was a Cho type one failure was a re-tear at the bone tendon junction. These are relatively easy to manage. You can either go back and re-repair back to the bone, or you can use your patches as a graft or an overlay. And he documented that 74% of the single row repair failures were CHO type 1, this preferable type of failure. It was just the opposite for double row repairs. 74% of double row repair failures are CHO type 2, the much more difficult to manage a retear pattern that's at the muscle tendon junction. So even playing the what if this doesn't do great uh, hypothetical, you would rather have a single row repair because the revision is potentially easier. And so here's a surgical video. This is a right shoulder in the lateral decubitus position. You can just get a glimpse there of an all suture triple loaded anchor. So now the footprint here taken up by that anchor is only about 2.8 millimeters, very small anchors, but very strong. I, I'm uh, using this suturing type of technique, but there are suture passers that can be used. Uh, there's various ways to pass sutures through the tendon nowadays. I think the key is in aligning your sutures, we want to get those three sutures spread apart like that. That maximizes our grasp on the tendon and minimizes our stress on each suture. And so after we pass and tie those knots, we have a nice triple loaded suture anchor rotator cuff repair in a single row. You can see that I'm close to the articular margin. One of the things that we showed in our study was that footprint will completely restore about six months down the road. And then finally, we're using our biology by making little bone vents to allow some of the marrow elements come out. So thank you for the opportunity to present this. Hopefully we'll give some of you some clinical pearls and uh, always willing to hear more exciting things about rotator cuff repair.